Across the Sea of Cortez from Mexico's Baja California is the stark coastline of the Sonoran Desert. For centuries, part of this coast has been the home of a small Indian nation. These are the Concoc. Much of the world knows them as the Seri. There have never been very many of them. Today there are about a thousand, and they live on what may seem like the bleakest of coastal deserts. Until you see how the Seri take care of their part of it, their green estuaries. The Seri are famous among environmentalists as the people who have mastered their desert, know all the little ticking details of living with and preserving their few plants and animals and sea creatures. They sing of this. Theirs is a poetry of the sea and earth. The Sari are known for small wood and stone carvings and reed baskets and providing tour guides for the coast and offshore islands. What else could they do here? Who in this modern world might need and value their cultural expertise with plants and animals of the coastal desert? Just to the south of the Sari nation is the beginning of another extraordinary place, but a very different one. Climaxing 40 years of research and development, in the deserts of Mexico, Arizona, Arabia, India, and Africa are the seawater irrigated meadows of Seawater Farms Bahiaquino, fed by the vast shrimp ponds built over the past decade. What began at the University of Arizona, then spun off to the American nonprofit Seawater Foundation, is now spinning off to a commercial company, Global Seawater Incorporated, GSI. This planned evolution includes Mexican, American, European, and Middle Eastern investors. The integrated seawater farms take effluent from the existing shrimp ponds and instead of discharging it back to the sea as waste and pollutant, use the fertilized salt water to irrigate forests of mangroves and meadows of salicornia. Salicornia is a remarkable oilseed crop that thrives on full-strength seawater and provides high-quality biofuels for automobiles and aircraft. Ready? To protect the actual beachfronts of these seacoasts, for environmental or economic reasons, the sea farms are located a few kilometers inland. At Bahiaquino, to move the seawater in from the coast, a river from the sea was dredged out. It has been named Rio Neninger after the developer of this aquacultural park. This is where the Seri come in. These rivers from the sea are not narrow ditches. They're wide, deep channels going kilometers inland. There are banks to these rivers, new shorelines and wetlands where trees and plants that need only seawater will grow, where desert and coastal wildlife will come. Birds, reptiles, fish, a lush green edge of the sea. To achieve this, who better than the Seri? They will help plan, design, grow seedlings, and plant forests along the new seawater riverbanks here on the Gulf. For more distant sea farms in Africa and the Middle East, people from those countries can come to the Seri for training and experience. All this means jobs for the Seri, jobs using their traditional expertise wherever needed. And the Seri can participate in the direct ownership of these seawater forests by earning shares of stock from the Seawater Foundation. There's more. For the new forests they plant on this coast at the edge of the desert and the sea, they will earn carbon credits, credits worth more money every year for the Seri Nation. So with Carl Hodges, the founding director of the original University Group, and then the Seawater Foundation and GSI, and with some of his board members, including Christer Salin and Ted Circuit, longtime benefactors of the research, the Seri marked the beginning of this project with a little ceremony, a presentation of gifts, the symbolic planting of a few tiny mangroves, including one for the King of Sweden, determined to reduce atmospheric carbon everywhere. Just a few small trees right now, but soon to the south near Bahiaquino, the Seri and the Seawater Foundation, in a kind of partnership that has never existed before, will be planting trees by the millions. 